In traditional life, in traditional ways, um, it is the women, the young women and uh, the older women that take care of the water. The boys are responsible for the fire. They are the fire keepers. So you boys have to learn to, to uh, learn how to cut wood and how to prepare that fire. Because sometimes in your life, you will be asked when you go to a ceremony to go and prepare the fire, you boys. And you have to learn how to do that carefully without, uh, without cutting yourself to get that fire ready. But for the women and the young women, we take care of the water. Whenever we have a ceremony, uh, we include water. We always, in our feast and in our ceremonies, no matter which ceremony you use, you, you always use the water. And the reason that we use the water, the reason that women and young girls use water is because we, we can't forget that when we were in our tummies inside, before we were born, we were, um, it was the water that kept us alive. The watershed is uh, all the connecting waterways. Like here we have some rivers. These are your rivers in here. All of these guys. Yeah, those are your rivers. No, the rivers, they flow. They flow into your main watershed. We went through the watershed model. We taught them about what a watershed model is and the importance of water. And I modeled it through that the community was actually Saging First Nations and how we, we set it up basically on how we live with our houses, our industrial area, our farm areas, our um, forestry areas, some golf courses, everything. And then we polluted it. We polluted it with pesticides. We polluted it with manure from the cows, from the farms. And what they seen was how the trees and those buffer strips and the wetland area soaked up all the pollutants as it was raining and as the pollutants were being pushed down. And so that leads to a clearer lake section. And that was our discussion on pollutants and how um, the importance of trees. <laughs>
we're gonna learn about bioaccumulation and biomagnification. So we're gonna pretend to be different water organisms from little tiny zooplanktons all the way up to fish. And we're gonna see what happens when poisons and toxins and our water gets polluted. The one thing I never told you that was these black balls are poison. Somehow poison got into the water and that's what the black balls are. So for a zoo of plankton, because they're so tiny, all they need is one of these to eat one of these poisons and then they would die. So you, you can see how many that distant plankton ate. <laughs> Thank you.